In this video, we're gonna install Git Bash on Windows 10. So before we install Git Bash on Windows 10, I wanna cover a few quick details with you. Uh, so first things first, why do you need Git Bash? Well, it's for development and coordination with other developers, and so you can install other tools and packages like Python, which I'll have another video on later on. Now there's three things that essentially encompass Git Bash. We have the shell, and then we have bash, and then we have git. So we got three different things going on here. So the shell is a command line interface or CLI, and it's for running commands on your computer. And most web servers run on Linux, and the shell is vital for interacting with those servers. So if you're gonna do any sort of development or anything on the web with servers, you're gonna wanna know how to use shell to interact with those servers. Now, one thing to note is Microsoft does have a terminal program and it's used to access the shell, but it runs MS-DOS versus Unix, which is Linux. So it's even though it's a, a terminal and shell, it's the wrong one. So that's why you need git bash. Um, bash, however, is basically an emulator for running Unix, aka Linux shell on Windows. So by installing bash, we can use the Linux or Unix shell. And then Git is a version control software that helps de developers collaborate when building software and websites and sharing their code and all that type of stuff. You've probably heard of GitHub before. And so basically it's a big repository of code that developers can connect to, share code, talk to each other, keep track of the versions, do, uh, different forks and things of that nature with the code. Uh, so that's GitHub and it's all like interconnected basically. And then Git Bash is essentially a package that installs both Git, so the, the version control software, and Bash, the shell, the emulator for running sh the Linux shell on Windows at the same time. So it's like a package that encompasses both of those tools and to do it, we're gonna to go to this website right here and I'll have a link down below. And we'll go to the downloads area. And of course we'll go to Windows because we're installing it on Windows. And we'll go ahead and just save it to our desktop real quick. And I'll go ahead and pop it open. And do I wanna allow this app to make changes to your device? Of course I do, thanks for the warning though. And we'll go with next here. Go ahead and pick your directory. I'll leave it at the default. Yep, it already exists. All right, so we have a few options here. Basically, I'm gonna leave it as the default settings. I've found no reason to change it at all. Um, it works how it is set up here. So I'm gonna leave it the default, hit next. You can go ahead and change the folder, things of that nature if you want to, hit next. And then we have an option here to use a different editor. Now I actually use the Atom, Atom as Git's default editor. So I'm gonna use select this option here, but if you don't have a text editor already, just go ahead and go with the default. It doesn't really matter in my experience. Uh, so I'll just roll with Adam, and then I'll go with next. And then we have a few options. Use git bash from git, or use git from git bash only, git from the command line, and also from third party software, and git, use git with blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter, go on with the recommended option. All right, next. And then use the open SSL library, use the native one, go on default again, and then check out Windows style, check out as is, blah, 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 going with the default settings. Cool. And then we got use min TTY or use def Windows default console, cons control console, whatever. We're going with min TTY because it's prettier, a prettier terminal than the black one. It's got some colors, things of that nature. So we use the default again, next. And then we got some other options, enable file system catching, enable git credential manager, enable symbolic links. I'm gonna leave the default settings. Yeah, you guessed it, right? And then we got enable experimental built in at IP. And I'm not gonna do that because it's experimental and I don't know what I'm doing enough yet to know if I wanna be messing with experimental stuff. So we'll go with install, let it go ahead and extract and install the, the tool. And now we can go ahead and I'm gonna select launch git bash. I don't need to view the release notes, finish. And boom, just like that, I have git bash installed on my PC. Now, if this video was at all helpful to you, I greatly appreciate a like, a comment, a subscribe, and I hope you have a great rest of the day.